Okay, listen. In this audio clip, I'm going to talk about the myth of self-defense. Yes, I'm going to repeat this. The myth of self-defense. Okay. Why am I calling it the myth of self-defense? Now, first of all, what is a myth? A myth is a, you know, a conviction, a belief that's based upon false evidence in reality. It is based on some evidence, upon some true facts, but the conclusion of those true facts is false. And it's that false conclusion, you know, that false belief, that's what a myth is. So a myth is relied upon true facts, but the conclusion based upon those true facts is false. And that's what a myth is. And self-defense is one of those myths that are quite common these days. Why is it a myth? First of all, the, the, I would say it, the, the conviction that many people have when it comes to violence is wrong. What do I mean with it? Many people don't even know what violence is. So how can you defend yourself against something that, you know, you don't even know how to define it? Alright? And for those who do know what violence is, you know, because violence isn't just physical, it's also emotional and mental. However, for those who do know what violence is, often those people live by false beliefs, other myths of when violence occurs. And Hollywood movies play an enormous role in this. In Hollywood movies, you often see a psychopath, often they quote Bible verses, they do that to make you get a you know, a negative image of Christianity, but that's a whole other subject, I'm talk, we'll, I will talk about that later, but it also has to do with this, you know, you often, in Hollywood movies, you often see a psychopath, or a, some Arab from the Middle East that's a terrorist that tries to attack people, or you see some guy with a lot of tattoos on a motorcycle as, you know, someone violent, someone we have to look out for. Those images, you know, when you watch such movies or when you see the news in the media, those images are being captured by your mind and if it's repeated quite often, you begin automatically to believe that, to, I mean, you automatically begin to associate violence with those images. So you begin to believe that someone is violent if they look like a certain image that is associated with violence. And you know, I want to tell you guys, you need to examine yourself so, so that you will get rid of all those false beliefs and those images, you know, that Hollywood has placed, you know, in, in, um, in the world. Why? Because those images are false. You know, violence, you know, most of the time when violence occurs, whether it's emotional violence, sexual violence, or homicide, or even massacres, it happens within the people of the same household, people of the same close community. Just think about that. Strangers cannot just come to you and attack you because they don't know where you live, they don't know how you, uh, what your routine is, they don't know your weaknesses. Those that are around you do. So, if you have to look for potential perpetrators, you should never look outside far off from one's own household. And with household I mean the place that people call their comfort zone, the, the place, the social circle of people you know, that you have interaction with regularly. When violence occurs, it most of the time it happens let me say 98% of the time it happens within its own household. Why? Because people of the same household, of the same clan as I call it, they have common interests. And to secure those common interests, you know, all members of the group needs to co need to cooperate. If one doesn't cooperate, it's a danger for the whole group. So that's where peer pressure comes from, which is also from a violence just to keep the group functioning.
and even within groups, you know, you have power st struggles in which certain individuals try to rise above others to get their way. You know, and because you know, you know, the household, you also know where you can manipulate people, how you can attack people, and how you can blame others for what you do. So, when you talk about self-defense, you know, you, oh, 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 let me say, most of you that are listening to this, unless you know better, you picture a scene like you're walking down the street, someone tries to rob you, and you use physical force to defend yourself. Or, if there, if you, or you walk through the city and, and you know, someone tries to rape you and you defend yourself. That's your, you know, that's your image, your, your belief about self-defense. But I'm going to tell you something here that may shock many of you. Self-defense does not exist. You can only remove yourself from a dangerous circumstance so that you nor anyone else gets hurt. That's the only thing you can do. Why? Because whenever someone attacks you violently and you engage in violence to, do, to stop the other violence, only more violence is created. Even if the other flees after you use force back, it's still violence. So basically you have two perpetrators right now. One attacked the other, but now the victim has become a per perpetrator too. So basically, it's not self-defense. Because you willingly give in to the, to the dangerous circumstance. The best thing you could have done is by simply walking away. Alright? And you know, that's the best thing, and I'm saying the only thing you can do if a situation becomes, if a circumstance becomes ugly. Just remove yourself, walk away. By doing that, you are rejecting the invitation to get engaged in evil. Because violent behavior is evil and it will always bring misery and hurt. It may even get you killed. Alright? So, but most people aren't aware when they are, are victimized by violent people because a lot of violence happens covertly and subtly in a manner that you don't realize it's violence that you're being uh, that you're being abused so what can you do when someone chooses to be abusive you can't do anything about the fact that the other choose chose to be abusive what you can do is remove yourself from the abuser so that you will have peace because you deserve peace and you should remove yourself from an abuser and remove yourself from the memories, move on, forgive them and move on with your life, not because they deserve it, but because you deserve peace. And you deserve safety. That's the only way out of ugly circumstances. You see? And, you know, when I read the book of Matthews and the book of Luke, you know, in the New Testament, often the Lord Jesus walked away from negative circumstances you see and you know the lord jesus is god himself he created heaven and earth you know the earth belongs to him so when he for example you, you read about the two garrison men that were have extremely demon possessed how the lord delivered them and healed them from their demonic possession you see as a result the demons entered you know, into a herd of swine, and the swine drowned themselves into the lake of Galilee. Two of the herdsmen fled, fled to the city and to the countryside and reported everything that happened. So the whole community from both the city and the countryside came to see the two extremely demon-possessed men that supposedly were healed, and they saw that both of them were healed indeed. As a result, they became so afraid of the healing of those two men because and they recognized that Jesus was the one that healed them and so they became afraid and ple pleaded and begged Jesus to leave their country you know these people made up their mind that they prefer you know that to be in a negative bitter state than to receive redemption they didn't want 
Jesus to heal those two men because by healing those two men, they didn't have a scapegoat anymore upon whom they could vent all their aggression. Now they had to deal with their issues by taking responsibility. And they knew, knew that Jesus took care of these guy, two guys, so he can also take care of us. You, know, you can also call us from an account and then um, deal with us. So that's why they begged them to leave. I was always thinking a few years back, I was thinking like, Lord, why did you leave? You're God. They are the ones that should be put, on, put in their place. But as I matured into the faith, I began to realize that what the Lord Jesus did was the best thing. When he walked, every time he walked away from neg a negative circumstance, you know, he, he encountered new opportunities and, how to say it, uh, and other possibilities to advance the kingdom of God. So every time he chose to walk away, it was for the best. You know, there were other people that were in need, that needed help, and, you know, he could better spend his time and his effort over there than to keep wasting it with people who already made up their mind that they want to hang on in dark hang on in darkness okay and so you know carrying a weapon for example whether it's a gun or a knife or anything is unwise because whenever you put your trust into for example you know a weapon you know your mind becomes distorted and you won't recognize all the dangers anymore your mind, your discernment goes off, and you find yourself quicker in negative circumstances. So, understand that well. If even the Lord, God himself, walked away when people turned ugly, then why are we, in our, in our finite and, you know, limited wisdom, thinking that we can stay and handle things, when the Lord himself walked away? That's why... The whole idea of carrying a weapon is foolishness. You know why? Okay, let's let, let's paint a scenario right now. You're living in a ghetto, in a dangerous neighborhood, okay? And you decide, okay, I want to feel safe, so I'm going to carry a weapon with me. Whether it's a knife or a gun, at least something I can use when someone tries to attack me. Okay, the idea sounds correct. You want to be safe. However, the method is stupid. You know why? Because a weapon can be used either by you or by your attacker. And whether it's used by you or the attacker, the result is still ugly. Okay? And by bringing that, carrying the weapon with you, you increase the chance of something bad happen, happening. You know why? This is a little bit psychology, but it's, it makes sense. Look. When you don't have a gun, for example, or a knife, you don't have anything to use when someone tries to come at you, right? So you know that if someone decides to become ugly, you need to run away. So that's why, by your natural instinct, you avoid negative circumstances. By, by uh, your instinct, your mind, you know, registers danger immediately and you remove yourself. But once you carry a weapon with you, that discernment is turned off. Why? Because in your mind, you've made, you've said, you said to yourself in your mind, you know, I have something with me, so nothing's going to happen to me. And you've placed your faith in a weapon. Now, the, your mind will ignore most of the warning signals when a circumstance becomes ugly. Because, you know, you've made up your mind, I, nothing can happen to me because I have a... I have a weapon with me. So what happens now is that you won't recognize when danger is coming and you will walk right into dangerous circumstances. And when you're in a dangerous circumstance, because you've placed your trust in the, on a weapon, you will use it. And the danger is, sometimes you will use it when it's not necessary. Sometimes the least provocation you, you, you will see as an enormous attack. You know? It's proven. When people carry weapons with them, they have a huge chance of they themselves becoming the perpetrators of violence. You know, that's why in most countries, people are forbidden to carry weapons with them. 
But even if it's a knife for the kitchen, you know, you can still go to jail for it. And you know, guys, there's another thing, you know, linked to this. People have the tendency to misunderstand each other. So what happens if you misunderstand someone and you think, oh, I'm being attacked and now you pick up your weapon and smash them? You see, but we don't want to talk about that. Or let's, let's go to another thing. Uh, let's say you don't carry weapons, but you use martial arts. You know how to knock someone down and make someone hit someone into coma. You see, it often happens, and it still happens, that people who, you know, practice martial arts, they began to use it in daily life to protect themselves, and they ended up killing or you know, harming people for life. And they themselves either went to jail or or if they didn't went to jail, their whole lives were ruined because now the people want to take revenge upon them. You see? I mean, let's leave the whole thing of jail and the court behind. Even if you are not going, even if you're not being convicted to go to jail, even if the police and the whole government doesn't uh, react to it, once you use violence against another human being to protect your own interest, it's still violence, you've still victimized someone, you've now activated a curse upon your life that will attract more violence and more negative circumstances. See, every time you, cho you choose to, uh, to become involved in negative behavior, you activate a curse from working in your life. It doesn't matter if your intention is to protect yourself or to protect your family or to protect others. Anytime you use negative methods to get something done, you've activated a curse because with every negative method, there is a curse attached to it. You cannot use sin to defeat sin. Just like you cannot get rid of psychopaths by becoming a psychopath by and killing all the psychopaths. You know? Look, self-defense doesn't exist. Alright? The only thing you can do to be safe is to leave, leave negative circumstances. Identify negative people, identify dangerous people, and, you know, just stay away from them. That's the only thing you can do. And if you don't have discernment, ask the, ask the Father in the name of Jesus to give you discernment and the courage to act upon that discernment. Okay, that being said, I'm going to shut down this audio clip and may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you.